We're back at the market here, just waiting for Chef Stephanie to show up, but I wanted to see what you two are up to. So uh, Marilyn and I go back a long ways, and uh, she shops the market. So I Every thought, Saturday. Nice. you know, why not get her in here to be our guest bartender for tomorrow's lunch Wonderful. that Chef is going to be creating. Yes. And uh, our history is hotel business. So yeah, you guys go way back. Way back, way, way back. back. Way hotel back. Hotel and drinking. Hotel yes. and drinking when <laughs> yes. we were young. So yes. she's fully well aware of where all the other bars in town are doing. She's a woman <laughs> okay. in the know, yes. right? So why not have somebody to introduce us some really Great. amazing cocktails that we're going to shop the market? Yep. So right. I think you got to wait for Steph's, yeah. Chef Stephanie. That's right. Say that three times. Right? <laughs> it's yes. a tongue twister for sure. Yeah. Chef you, Steph, Chef Steph, Chef yeah. Steph. So you yeah. wait for Chef here, and then Meryl and I will go and get our ingredients. Yeah. And then I think you got to go, and then we'll shop the market with Chef Steph <laughs> after. <laughs> that sounds great. Okay. Well done. Okay. 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 I'm excited to hear what you come up with. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. How are you? Nice Good. to see you. Thanks for yeah. coming. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Welcome to the Old Strathcona Farmer's Market. Yeah. It's like a chef's paradise. It, it is. is, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like you think it, it's here. Yeah. Fresh <laughs> and, uh, and ready to go. Tasty. Yeah. You're going to so be like just... a kid in the candy shop, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For chefs, it is a place, kids in the candy shop. Oh, it is. Can yeah. you imagine just having all this stuff? at your fingertips yeah. all the time. I know. And like so fresh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't even wait to get started. <laughs> so we had a friend of ours, Marilyn, here earlier, uh, picked out a few things to make some cocktails okay. for the lunch you're going to prepare tomorrow. Oh, that sounds great. So I am going to leave you ladies to go do the shopping because, you know, as she says, I always got market stuff, manager yes. stuff. Yes, he's got like <laughs> manager yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I love shopping, so. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. What hey, a coincidence. See, it's perfect. Yeah. I'm getting a great vibe right now. This feels yeah, good. Yeah, well, surprise us. I'm curious what you got in mind and what you're going to find in the market. The wheels are turning. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Well, and this is an extra special show today, too, because we are having our first female certified chef on the show. Yeah. I'm not sure why it took us this many shows to do that. <laughs> right? Where have you been? Yeah, I... I, you were just waiting for me. Totally. Just yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, we're excited to have you. We're excited to see your cooking. And because you are a catering chef, we're going to go into some other friends of ours into their home tomorrow yes. and show your catering skills. I know, and I cannot wait. We're going to have so much fun. Yeah, okay. and they're excited because they just <laughs> renovated their home. So they're all giggles about showing it off. Oh, so. renovated kitchens? Yeah, right? Fun, yeah. New equipment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll let you ladies do your thing and we'll talk in a bit. Okay? Sounds good, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. See you, Keith. Okay, a little secret about my favorite booths to go to are the ones giving free samples. I love free samples, I love free food. <laughs> oh, I knew we would get along, I could sense it right away. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't great. love to try before they buy, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to come to Forever Foods today because all of their dips are plant-based um, and that means they're dairy-free. And so that's mm. great if you have people with like a lactose intolerance and you'd said your son is uh, yeah. dairy-free. Actually, yeah, I've got a son that has dairy allergies. So he can't have anything with milk, no creams, cheese, butter, chocolate, nothing like that. Well, this will be perfect for you guys because <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do a dill mashed potato mm. with their dill dip, which is, happens to be the one we're sampling right now it's so amazing oh great so how many do we need do we want to grab one or two dips 
Um, I believe one will work out just perfect for us. Okay. Um, I would always grab a second for myself, but right. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so well, we got much. We've got a lot more stuff to grab, so this will be perfect. Are you able to throw that in there? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, right. I say let's go shopping. I yeah. Normally I could stand here and eat free samples all day. Right. But I think we better go grab the rest of the food. Sounds good. Thank you so much. So I'd really like to grab some fresh pitas. Oh, well, perfect. The Happy Camel has homemade fresh pitas that people actually even make right through the night. Wow. So it's made fresh daily. Oh, see, and fresh is, fresh is best, right? right? Fresh is best, yeah. it sure is. But they have lots of different selections of types of flavors. They've got spinach, uh, they've got whole wheat, they've got organic, so. I was just gonna say that spinach and caramelized onion sounds amazing, right? but. I'm going to be pairing it with a duck breast and some kimchi, so I want to make sure that uh, I don't uh, want to overwhelm any of the flavors. So okay. I think we're just going to go with the whole wheat. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Fresh is best and whole wheat is neat. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Okay, perfect. We'll put that in the magic bag. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Yay. Now you have kimchi as one of the items that we need yes. for your special lunch. So I wanted to bring you to the kimchi place. Kimchi place, yeah. This is Alex. Hi. Alex, uh, what's a good kimchi that you can recommend for us for the chef to do a special um, lunch? Chef, you can't go wrong with the original one. So this is the one that in Korea, traditional, when you wake up, you know, you're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, this is the go-to one. This is the regular one, just fermented cabbage with um, Korean red chili flakes and just yeah. uh, ferment it for about a week, right? We also have different variety ones as well. So we have the white kimchi. This is the one without the chili uh, powder. So it's more like sauerkraut, but like a Korean version. And we do also have the radish one as well. I can show you guys that as, as well. These ones right here. So these are a lot more oh, interesting. sweeter. Yeah, these were a lot more sweeter. It's, they're all traditional like type of kimchi. You can make 100 types of kimchi, like yeah. any vegetables, you could you know, ferment it. But uh, if you want to make something... But is this your own family recipe? Correct, for family oh, recipe. Nice. My, mom's, my mom's mom, my mom's mom's mom. <laughs> Generations, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you've got so much stuff packed in there. Yeah. But I heard that there's no MSG. No MSG, and, and it's, it's also vegan as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Wonderful. So no fish. No fish, fish yeah. Oh, okay, because is that usually the traditional is traditional, to have a bit of fish? yeah. If you do if people do want it, we could make it um, as well as they just pre order it. But yeah. in the farmers market we noticed that a lot of people don't like that strong. Yeah, that I know I don't. Yeah. So we, we keep it uh, vegan and uh, no MST, uh, no fish sauce or anything like that. Yeah. The nice thing about that is it's not gonna overpower our duck. Oh good, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So it sounds good to you? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Well, we've got lots of selection. Which one are you thinking? I think I'm gonna get uh, the original because uh, I I love kimchi and I can't wait to try your yeah, original sure, yeah. family yeah. recipe. Yeah, just be careful when you open the jar because there's a little pop to yes, it. Yes, perfect. I have experienced that. Yeah. I had my face right over it when I popped it open and popped it's very it. potent. Potent, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you know it's good kimchi, kimchi right? right? Exactly, a lot of gas buildup. <laughs> That's right. the test. If yeah. you can't put your face over it <laughs> <laughs> or be sitting down maybe, yeah. just kind of like drop it in the drop sink and run. The, yeah. Drop good. and run. Yeah, drop it and run, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it is the bomb. It is the bomb. Yeah. The bomb. Yeah. Kimchi bomb. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to steal that. Okay. Well, we're going to grab this one. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In there. All right. Here we go. All right. There you go. Thank you. Happy to take care. Yeah. So now I'm going to bring you to a place called Urban Fresh. And the reason I wanted to come here is because all of their salsas are gluten-free, they're vegan, they're nut-free. I know, it's amazing. And they have an incredible variety. Um, I love shopping here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. That all sounds incredible, but my big question, do you have any samples? Yes, oh. of course. <laughs> oh, good. There oh, yum. Go. Thank, Thank you so much. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. All right, what is this that we're sampling? You're sampling uh, Argentina chimichurri? Chimichurri? Yeah. Oh, okay. And it has uh, fresh cilantro, parsley, green onion, mm. garlic, 
and it goes well with steak. It would be amazing on steak. This would also go really, really well on our pork chops for for our meal. Okay, are we gonna get it then? I think we're definitely gonna get this one. And I see that you have it in uh, regular and spicy, right? Yes. Okay. I have the spicy version here, mm -hmm. and that's the regular. I think I'm gonna get the regular. Okay. okay. But uh, next time I'm definitely gonna try the spicy. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, so this one for our pork chops? Yes, absolutely. One or two? I think we better go with two. Two? Yeah. Okay. No spice at all? No spice. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. I can take that. Thank you. And so how do you get your dips tasting so delicious? What's your secret? Because it's all fresh vegetables. And right now the weather is nice. So I have a veggie garden. Oh, nice. Yes. So I use my parsley, cilantro, green onion from my garden. That's and what you can taste. I know. Yeah. You can taste the freshness, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. how long have you been doing this? I've been doing for close to four years. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, well, we really appreciate it. I can't wait to try that on your lunch special. It's going to be amazing. Because the customers, some customers, they say they put it on everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They put it in the eggs, baked potato. Yeah. yeah. I can see why. That yeah. tastes like it would go good with everything. Oh, that would mm -hmm. be amazing at breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm really tasting the oregano. Right? Mm -hmm. It does make difference, especially when it's fresh. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fresh okay. is best. Yeah. Oh. And just on the chips was so good, just as a regular dip. Yeah. You can eat with chips. Yeah. 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 Like I have gluten free chips. If you perfect, yeah, and if you really like um, like a sweet, uh, but also savory sauce, definitely need to try the tamarind because uh, oh. tamarind is an incredible fruit and it makes amazing dips. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And tamarind goes well with pakora. Yes. Yeah. Great. Well, we'll take those two. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. Have a great day. You too. Yeah, take care. There you go. Right. See you, you guys. So much. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, Chef, what are you grabbing from the Four Whistle Farm? So uh, I wanted to make sure that they didn't sell out because their product is so amazing that that happens quite frequently. So I called in ahead and I had them put aside three uh, boneless uh, pork loin chops, three nice. bone-in pork loin chops. Okay. Uh, some duck breast and some bacon. And those are all for me. So what's everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna make uh, the chimichurri grilled pork uh, oh. chop. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use the duck breast for our kimchi bacon uh, duck breast crostinis. Sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's gonna be incredible. So. Okay. Well, that's a good thing that you put it aside. I know. These delicious that can sell out really fast. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. All right, go. One of the most important parts of my job is to make sure we don't forget dessert. Get the board. <laughs> so that's why we're at the Persian Empire Pastry booth. And then we haven't met yet. What is your name? My name is Mehdi. Mehdi, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Nice to meet you. And who is this lovely lady next to and you? My, my wife, Ellie. Hi, nice Ellie. To nice to meet you. Yeah, why don't you tell us about your pastries? Uh, we have a traditional Persian pastry and also the modified pastry as well. Really? Uh, I started from baklava. It's one of the most important uh, pastry we have. Mm -hmm. I love baklava. And, uh, Me too other pastry like roasted chickpea cookies. I categorize my pastry to the gluten-free, vegan, and regular cookies. That's really? fantastic. Oh, that's so nice yeah. to hear. Yeah, and gluten-free, normally you don't hear that with pastry. Yes. In uh, back home, uh, we have regular cookies. When I came to Canada, I start to modify the recipe. So that's why I categorize my pastry to that. To the, the gluten-free and vegan. Okay. For example, we have baklava, which is vegan. Yeah. Oh. And then I modify the the baklava, the the new taste, espresso and almond. Oh, that sounds that so good. good. <laughs> and then the gluten-free cookies, and uh, also roasted chickpea cookie. Many people 
they surprised how yeah. I can make uh, cookies from chickpeas. chickpeas. Yes. Well, that chickpea flour, I mean, when you roast it, it gets that nice nutty flavor. It's so good. Oh, I love it's it. One, it's one of the most uh, in, uh, uh, interested cookies, you know, people looking for that. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, and then I noticed that you've got some uh, bagged food here as well. What is that? Yes, we have also a Persian statue with different oh. roasting. I roasted with saffron. Saffron mm -hmm. is one of the most expensive flavor. Yeah, well, I noticed it's in gold packaging. Is that yeah. because it's more expensive than gold exactly, right now? Exactly, yeah. more than gold. <laughs> and it's a small package too, right? right? Yeah, well, our taste buds will appreciate it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very good and also healthy. Yes. <laughs> and we can use it for any meal. And we roast it with in, a, in the knots, different flavor. And also I can, I can explain more about the saffron regarding my ice cream as well. It's in your ice cream. Yes, and so that's actually what we're here for today, is we're gonna get the pistachio and saffron ice cream. What we're gonna do is we're gonna melt it down, mix it up with uh, egg yolk and uh, prosecco, and we're gonna whip it what? over heat and into a nice light frothy wow. sauce, and we're gonna put that over top of some fresh fruit. Exciting. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait for the, for the t t having taste of the, these, these uh, Exciting. I will definitely have to come back and bring you a sample. Yeah. I will be happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's right. We're so, going to whip it up. I'm going to get three of them, if that's okay. For sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank we'll you. put that. I really I'll appreciate take that. those. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. You'll take them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you again. Great. It was thank so nice you. to meet you. Me yeah, too. Thank, thank you very much. Have a good day. We'll Thanks. see Bye. you again. Yeah, see you. I had to sit down after you described that amazing dessert you're going to make for us. My mind was blown. So while I, I took a moment, I see that you did more shopping. Yeah, so I ran over to Peas on Earth and I grabbed some of their incredible fresh kale, uh, some of their wonderful uh, yellow potatoes, and then their garlic scapes. So oh. garlic scapes are, if you ever plant garlic, I'm not sure if you have. Yes. Um, but I they're have. all the little stems that come up with the little flower buds on the end. Yeah. And they are incredible. Incredible. You cut them up, saute them, they taste just like garlic. They're amazing. Yeah, and they look so nice too. A little bit better than just the regular garlic bowl. Very pretty, yeah. But not as strong as... Uh... They are just a little bit um, less strong than yeah. the garlic bulb itself, but still that wonderful garlic flavor without the heat. Oh, okay. Yeah, that all sounds amazing. So. Are you feeling comfortable that we got everything for our menu? Yeah, we've got some amazing products. So I can't wait to get to work on like the dessert, um, the duck and bacon <laughs> with uh, kimchi on the crostini. It's gonna be so much fun. Now, I know you talked about feeling like a kid in a candy shop. Yes. So we're gonna take the kid out of the candy <laughs> shop and head to the kitchen. Does that sound good? I can't wait, let's okay. get started. We'll go meet Keith, he'll yep. be waiting for us there. We'll see him tomorrow. Tracy. Yes, Keith. A lot of shopping yesterday. Oh, it was so fun. Yeah? Yeah. So we got a wait. big day planned today. Yeah, we got an amazing three course meal. Perfect. And three cocktails oh. to go with it. Three cocktails. Three. Oh, my goodness. Why not? Why, well, why really? not? Right? Who makes the rules here? <laughs> I think it's the market manager. Yeah, that's right. I think the cocktails make the rules <laughs> in this one. And today we have Laura and Chris, who has invited us into their home. Uh, to do this, mm -hmm. to do this uh, final show uh, with Steph, Stephanie, chef our Steph? chef, chef Steph. I know I always have an issue with that. We're just gonna call her Chefany. Chefany, from now on. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris and Laura, thanks for having us into your home. Welcome. Yeah, tell us a little bit. You guys have been shopping the market, Chris, for a while. Uh, we've been shopping the market for decades. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Um, the market, I don't know how long the market's been around for. But, Almost 40 uh, years. Is it 40 years? Yeah. yeah well. You must have had hair back then. <laughs> I, I like did me. have hair. Like me. <laughs> well, we go to the same barber. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we used to live in that neighborhood, so we'd go there every Saturday. Perfect. Um, we're out in the Southwest now, so less frequently, but we still go. Yeah. 
you know, pick on the market manager mostly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, That's good. Yeah. Keep them in line. Yeah. Yes. But I love this neighborhood you're in now. It's beautiful. And so is your home. Thank Thanks. you for having us here today. Yeah, we renovated in 2019. You can tell it is so gorgeously set up and I love the colors that you've chosen. Tell us about some of the renovations that you did. Uh, we moved um, the kitchen. So the kitchen used to be sort of in the central area of the house and um, we moved it uh, against the far wall uh, where the fireplace used to be and oh. opened it right up so that uh, we had more space to entertain. And um, uh, you'll see when the chefs do their thing, uh, mm -hmm. that there's lots of room to, to move, move around. So when they renovate, prepare. they really renovate. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know what they say, when you have a house party and you have friends, it's always, the party is always in the kitchen, yeah. right? It so always stays in the kitchen. That's where the food yeah. and the booze is, yeah. and that's where everybody <laughs> starts to congregate. And they, yeah. that's where people end up. Yeah, yeah. it's comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. after a few martinis yeah. and margaritas. And yeah. So uh, thank you for letting us uh, be here. Uh, we've got a great menu and booze and food. Yes. And uh, we're going to have you guys just sit back and watch some of this, and then we'll do some tasting at the end. We're looking forward to it. Perfect. How's that sound? Very nice. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. All occasion catering is in the house. Literally. Literally in the house. <laughs> Raise the roof. <laughs> We're in the kitchen now at Chris and Laura's, and we have Chef Stephanie, which we've already entitled you Chefany. And that's your official title now for the day. New moniker. <laughs> and your partner, David, yes. from All Occasion Catering. And we're so excited to have a caterer because we haven't done that on our show about uh, uh, how you do catering for big events, for like families. It doesn't even have to be like a big wedding or something. You could do like a special occasion as well. So uh, we really wanted to give you a chance to talk about your catering company and then how you cater to big and small groups. That sounds great. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> us too. We're yeah. very happy to have you. Love to have you. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us. Uh, I, we know that you do big events. So yeah. tell us some of the biggest ones that you've done. Uh, so we've done uh, weddings. Um, we just did a grand opening for a new cruise ship center in Edmonton. Um, so we have cruise ships in Edmonton. <laughs> I know. That's what I said to her. Wow. I'm like. Where do we have cruise ships? Yeah, and, and where do we why, go? Why and was why I not invited? Why weren't we, right? Yes, Our show right. should be there. So next yeah. time. Definitely have to book a flight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. Yeah, and so how many people would you say were at the event? Uh, at that event, uh, they uh, requested 125, so. Okay. Wow. See, and I never know, like, if we have 10, 20 people coming over to our house, I never know how much food to get for that many people. So that's why I think it would be great to talk to you uh, and find out from a professional caterer exactly how much food is the right amount. The do's and don'ts right? of catering, <laughs> yes, right? Because yes. there's don'ts as well. That's so right. So we'll get people call in and they'll be like, oh, I've got uh, 20 people coming uh, and so I, I need you to make sure I don't run out of food. That is my job, is to mm -hmm. make sure we don't run out of food because, right. um, well, for one, nobody ever blames the host. They it always reflects blame on the caterer, caterers, right? right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whenever we have someone call in and say um, they have a certain amount of people, we always, based on the event or the type of food that we're doing, add um, 5 to 10% more. more people mm -hmm. to our list. Mm -hmm. um, just so that no matter what, there's always a little bit of an overage. Mm -hmm. And then that way we don't have to... Worry about the other thing too, you don't know the big eaters from the little eaters, right? Sometimes yeah. it works mm -hmm. out, but exactly. sometimes it doesn't. You got to yeah. know your yeah. audience. That's right. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have people come in and they'll just pile their plate full of of everything mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh my gosh. That's it's a cocktail <laughs> party. <laughs> right? Right? It's it's a sample. <laughs> but then you'll get sample. someone come in and they'll just take one thing, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's there's a little bit of a, a gameplay when it comes to the different uh, amounts and types yeah. of foods that you make, but it it's, just all depends on, on the event itself. It's a science. Yeah. Yes. And magic all put together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. you don't do just big events too. You'll actually come to the home and create a meal that is customized for a family or a couple. Absolutely. So uh, we've even done, um, we did a private in-home uh, anniversary party for two people. So uh, husband wanted a gift for his wife. He said, I don't know what to get her. And we were talking and I said, well, why not 
why not a dinner party? So, romance um, but just romance, it, right? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just you two. And so we come in, we do all the table decor, um, we bring everything ourselves because every kitchen is different and is equipped different. So mm -hmm. we bring everything that we need with us. We come into your home. Um, we'll ahead of time discuss the menu with you, get it all approved. Um, we make as much of everything that we can from scratch ourselves so we can accommodate different allergies and things like that um, or dislikes <laughs> that yeah, people have. Yeah. Right. And then we'll come in, we cater everything, we'll bring the dishes out to you. So the, the service table. as yeah. well, right? Yeah, absolutely. But the service. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. describe the dish and then we leave um, little ambience music and uh, Does David sing? We try not yeah, to. I, think so. <laughs> I saw some dance moves when you guys were setting up. Yeah. Was it was like, woo, woo. <laughs> um, yeah, and then when we leave, everything is completely cleaned up, ready to go. It's like we were never there. Um, and then we also do like individual meals. So um, we have a lady with COPD who has a hard time getting around and doing things for herself. So uh, we bring so meals you'll to deliver her. Specific. Yeah, we yeah. do individual meal plans. Wow. Um, or we'll do family meal plans. Uh, so basically, if you can think of the event, yeah. we can create it for you. So how do you price it? Like I know the first thing people ask is, well, what does it cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody always expects you to be able to just throw out a number. Thirty-five. Right away. Yeah, and with the price of everything going up these days, I imagine that gets harder and harder to yes. just give a price. It's menus, though, right? It yeah. is. So um, we discuss the menu completely with you. Everything that you're you're looking for. If you need some vegetarian options thrown in, or maybe it's an entire vegetarian mm -hmm. uh, menu. We did uh, a wedding that was all paleo. Um, so oh, okay. it, it all what just is paleo. Paleo is <laughs> it's they call it the caveman diet. So there's zero processed anything, like no yeah. sauces, nothing is processed. Okay. Um, they do Barbecue. very little grain. So it's basically just uh, like meats, uh, vegetables. Um, oh. Yeah, so okay. it's, it was very interesting. It was a lot of fun to do. Um, I love to do uh, different types of events and stuff like that like that because it challenges me as a chef and, and forces me to increase my skills and learn new things. So. I love that you say that because we have food allergies in our house and picky eaters. Yes. So it is so impossible to go to a restaurant or even for me to sit down and make one meal. Often I'll make four separate meals for everybody or three meals and then I'll just eat little bits of everybody else's. Yes. So it's nice to hear that you say you actually enjoy that because there's a lot of chefs that I've mentioned what our allergies uh, are and they just go, ooh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be okay. And that's <laughs> never comforting to hear that. No. <laughs> that means sure. it's not going to yeah. be okay. So uh, that's wonderful that you actually not only accept the challenge, but you uh, welcome it because in that way it gets your creative juices going and Absolutely. how can I make this inclusive for everybody? Yeah, I, yeah that's, that's the part I find fun, right? Yeah. Is, is challenging myself and uh, when you love what you do, that it does, it's not a challenge, right? No. So That's taking true. all of that, what are you doing today? Because I, I didn't get to go shopping. So yes, <laughs> what I know. are you planning? We, How many we, courses we and ourselves. what are they? Yeah. So. so we're going to start with a little bit of a canapé type appetizer. So okay. we're going to do a, a seared duck breast mm -hmm. with bacon, hickory smoked bacon, and kimchi in a pita. Ooh. <laughs> right? Ooh, and, yeah. I know. and then we're going to yeah. move on to our, our entree, which is going to be a chimichurri grilled pork mm -hmm. chop with a dill mashed potato and uh, sauteed kale with garlic scapes. Mm. Oh, good. And then for dessert, we're gonna end with uh, a pistachio and saffron sabignon, which is a dessert sauce mm -hmm. uh, over fresh fruit. A dessert wow. sauce. Yeah, too. I used to work in an Italian restaurant. They used to do zabella for a, a dessert. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was amazing. I just like the way that sounds. I know, Zabayon. right? <laughs> Zabayon. It's fun to say. Uh, yeah. You have to go zabella. So, Chef, uh, Tracy and I are going to step back and let mm -hmm. you and David start creating. Yeah, right? work your magic. And then Marilyn, I hear, has all the ingredients for our three cocktails to go with the courses so, you guys yeah. are preparing today. She's looking to pair with every course, yes. right? Yeah, so, yeah, so um, that's also another service we offer. So if you want uh, drink pairings and things like wine that. Wine pairing, cocktails. Yeah. Um, we have a bartender. We consult with them and and they'll come in and and do custom cocktails or 
or anything like that oh. for your event. Are you doing so a excited. house party? I am now. Okay. <laughs> I am now. We're I wouldn't ready. I. That We're ready amazing. to go. Let's do it. Let's, Let's get the it. house party rolling. Looking forward to it. All Perfect. right. So you guys work your magic and we're going to go check on what Marilyn's doing. We'll let you know when appetizers are ready. Okay. So to prep my duck breast for the appetizer, you just want to take your breast and you want to make sure that you score um, the skin and what that's going to do is because there's so much fat under the skin of a duck you want to make sure that you render that fat out otherwise it's going to be a really really greasy dish and you won't get a nice crispy skin so all you do is cut into it make a nice crisscross and then we're just going to season it up and I'm going to get it into a frying pan skin side down uh, just till it's um, it's going to kind of uh, compress a little bit and pull itself away from the pan and that's how you know when it's ready and that's going to be a nice crispy uh, duck skin and then it's going to go into the oven on 400 for about six to seven minutes and it should come out a very nice medium rare. You want to make sure that uh, you don't overcook a duck breast because it's going to get really kind of firm and chewy if you do that. And so I'm going to put a little uh, Chinese five spice on here and it's ready to go for the frying pan. So while our duck is in the oven, I'm going to start on our next course, which is the grilled chimichurri pork chops. And so I've got these pork chops uh, from Four Whistle Farms and I've just seasoned them with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic, and paprika. I'm gonna take them outside of the grill and uh, grill them about three to four minutes on each side just to get some really nice marks on them and a uh, nice smoky flavor. And then I'm gonna to top them with our chimichurri from Urban Fresh. And then I'm going to bring them in and put them in a 400 degree oven for about four to five minutes. So while they were on the grill, I made sure just to rotate um, a quarter turn the pork chops uh, every uh, two minutes or so just to get that really nice grill mark on both sides. And now I'm just going to take it and throw it in the oven on 400 for about four to five minutes. Um, we don't want to make sure that... Um, they're overcooked. We want only about four to five minutes because you want that um, medium, medium well temperature. If they're overcooked, they're going to be dry and hard. Um, and if they're undercooked, they're going to be chewy and hard to eat. Now, common myth about pork is uh, that you have to overcook it. We don't have to do that anymore in Alberta. We don't have what's called trichinosis, which is uh, uh, well, a a parasite. <laughs> we don't have that in our pork anymore. So we don't have to overcook our meat in order to make sure it's safe. Pork is beautiful when it's medium to medium well. You and Keith look like you had a blast shopping yesterday. We did. We did. It was so much fun. The first thing we bought actually was this birds and bees booty call <laughs> gin, which there's nothing like a booty call. For, for your some. cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. That's quite the place to start. It is. <laughs> what else have you got? So today we're going to be making a drink called Sneaky Blue. And the reason why it's sneaky is that it sort of just sneaks up on you. You have one and then all of a sudden you're feeling like maybe you could use that booty call. So <laughs> we're aptly gonna... named. We're gonna, and I wanted to use the blueberries from the market as well because they're so vibrant oh, and great right now. These look delicious. Look at those. So fresh. So we're going to start. It's really simple because I like it that way instead of... Yeah. Simple and delicious. Simple and delicious. Right? So we're going to start with a, a little ice. We're going to take this booty call <laughs> and pour a little bit in there. And if you can pour the vermouth... 
Yeah, and then so booty call just a. This is a gin, and it's and it's a flavored gin from Birds and Bees. And what and kind I, of flavors are in it? There's a little bit of like lime. I tasted lavender. It's a it's a more of a, a savory gin. Oh, I'm just doing a splash with vermouth. Oh is yes. that yeah, that's great. That's what we want. Okay. Yeah. And basically, I wanted to pair that with Stephanie's first course, which is the bacon and kimchi and duck uh, pita. So it's just going to go really nice together. Oh, that sounds like it'll go great with those flavors. And we're going to add in a little lemon juice. Mm. Add a little citrus mm -hmm. to put our lime on there. And then we got a lavender. Okay. We're going to add in just with a little And so everything's color. just kind of a splash, other than the booty call. Everything is a little splash. A little splash. Yeah, as long as we got that booty call gin in there, that's all we want. And <laughs> that's then, the star of the show. And yes. <laughs> that's right. And Top then, it off? Yes. Okay. That's good. There we go. With a little fizzy drink. Yes. Soda water or... Yeah, it's a sparkling lemon. Mm. So that citrus again. And then we're just going to throw the blueberries right in there. Oh, and I know what's next. And then top it off with mint, right? Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong, Ooh, wrong with mint. Let's turn that the other way. Yeah. Right in the middle Score there. Just a little flavor. Yeah. When mint is um, such a nice garnish for pretty much any cocktail. Yeah, it is. And I wanted to throw in the flowers and the limes and the blueberries and everything else just to round it all off. <laughs> now I filled that really high, so That's watch good. yourself. Like Okay. Picking it up. But I have here's a to the market, to do that. Tracy. Yes. And here's to your booty call. <laughs> <laughs> this looks great. Mmm. Oh, Yummy. nice flavor. Really smooth. Yeah, fresh. Very fresh. So really good for summer, but I think you could do this any time of the year. You could. That's a great starter. All right. That's our first cocktail. Yes. This duck breast looks amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it is ready to go. So um, we're going to get the appetizer going, but uh, before I show you how I put it together, I've done a few ahead of time. So I'm just going to get them in the oven to uh, crisp up. And uh, while that's in there, I will show you how we how we did this. Nice. Okay. Well, let me just hand this over to you. And this is just going in for a quick minute, it's right? It's just so going in for a minute, minute and a half, just to get all nice and crispy under the broiler. Okay. Oh, and can we talk for a minute while well, well, I'm sure we can How find we something find to talk about. <laughs> I know it's tough. So when the bell goes off, we're going to have to stop what we're doing and That's pay right. attention to that. So this is rested Ooh. nicely. So if you look, Ooh. it's a nice medium rare. Wow. Perfect. And all I do is cut a nice thin slice. And then you want to shorten it just a little bit because it doesn't fit quite in the pita. Okay. And Even then, with you scoring it, look at all the juices that are coming out of that yeah, duck breast. Yeah, like it's, if you squeeze that, look oh. at that. Wow. It's so beautiful. that'll be tender though. It won't be tough or anything. It'll right? be beautiful tender. Yeah. So yeah. I can trade you. Why don't I trade sure. you boards if you like? And it's not like chicken where it can have pink in the middle. Like it's more like a, a dark meat that it's way. It's red. Or yes. Like red so meat. Like a, yeah. a red meat. The, red all meat. of the meats that are considered wild game meats, you can eat... Uh, rare, medium rare, and uh, they're just beautiful that way. They don't uh, get all hard and rubbery and yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, it looks incredible. Thank you. So all I do is I take one of our happy camel pitas yep. and I uh, cut it into eight pieces, almost like a little pizza slice. <laughs> and I took some of our nicely fried bacon and put some of the duck breast and the bacon in, and then a little piece of kimchi. So you've got a ton of flavors going on here, the saltiness and the spiciness. Absolutely. Scents too, I can smell yeah. that kimchi from here. Salivating. Woo, yeah. it's clearing out the sinuses. Yeah. And we just put it on the bake tray, get that into the oven under the broiler, mm -hmm. and what that's gonna do is gonna reheat our uh, appetizer, crisp up the pita nice so it's mm -hmm. almost like a cracker, and oh, then we're gonna okay. top it with a little bit of cilantro for color and uh, go ahead and serve. Yeah, so why don't you make a couple whilst that thing goes off? Sure. Because uh, oh, well, I don't think you want to stick your hand in there now. That's fair, actually. <laughs> it is a little warm. It is a little warm. And I don't know about you, but kimchi is one of my favorite flavors. Well, there's uh, she's made a couple of different styles of kimchi mm -hmm. in the market now, and she's gone without the, the spiciness. That's right, yeah. yeah. And also, um, they've taken out the fish oils as yes. well with it. Yes. So they're vegan. So it's not quite yes. so fishy. Yeah, and so it's they're, vegan. they're, you know, yeah. who knew kimchi, kimchi, an old traditional style meal, part of a meal, uh, That's right. 
condiment, I guess, uh, has become more worldly. Right. right? right yeah. So, and then even choices like um, I've always thought of kimchi as being cabbage, uh, but they also had a radish one. Yeah, they too. make it out of daikon, which is a beautiful radish, and it's um, most radishes and stuff have that really peppery flavor. Daikon's very mild, and uh, so it's a lot very agreeable to a lot of uh, different palates. Yeah. Oh, is, uh, I think our timer's going off. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Good timing. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. I will remove this. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we got beautiful crispness wow. here. Ooh, nice. Okay, that nice, smells nice, so nice. good. And we're just going to take our tongs. Mm. Tong to tong, tong, tong. Ah. Of course, that one fell apart. That's okay. <laughs> That'll be mine. I'd rather have the food fall apart than us. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we're together. And it still looks amazing. We're going to put a couple of those on the plate. We're going to grab a little oh, bit of yeah, our fresh cilantro. cilantro here. Yeah. Everything's so fresh on there. The pitas, the cilantro. Can you say kimchi is fresh? Uh, <laughs> sure. It's fresh. It's Potent fresh out of the jar. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to put another one right here because you want it to look pretty. Yeah. Because that's what you bring to mm -hmm. home catering, right? That's right. It's, it's the kicked up oh, version. That's so good. And then you Perfect. serve that, and it's like a wonderful little appetizer. People can, if you did it at a cocktail reception, people can walk around, pick it up, and eat it like a taco. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, or I'm thinking for the, the kids, table. even for like a snack, after school snack, where they can come and just have. Really? Absolutely. It's like a fun thing, right? And it's Mom so will quick. eat more of it. <laughs> <laughs> say, an after school I, snack. I may nibble Doug on it as I'm cooking them. Doug Preston for an after school <laughs> snack. I like it. Right? And they're quick and easy to <laughs> put together. <laughs> for the kids, wing. Yeah. 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 That's Perfect. Right. I think this will go great with Marilyn's cocktail. Yes. So, yeah. And while out. you guys are enjoying this, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get started on the, or finishing up the, the uh, entree. The entree. The entree. Yeah. Jump yeah. Into the oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay. Well, the entree is good too. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, you got all of the ingredients ready to make another one here. Why don't you tell us what you're making for us? Yeah, so today we're going to, I mean, we're going to use the, the booty, call booty call gin again because it's just delicious. When you're reaching for a cocktail, why reach not? for a booty call, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the birds and the bees, uh, that, and also the cherry juice from Walker's and the cherries from there. And I wanted to pair this with the pork and garlic with Stephanie's second course. Oh, so this nice. is going to go lovely with it. So it starts off with a little bit of the gin. Now, can you do this as a blender drink as well? You can. Oh. Okay. Any of these drinks you can. It's nice. just sort of nice to have that option, just yeah. like the margarita world. <laughs> and then we're going to put in a little bit of this juice. Oh, nice. Some fresh cherry juice. And how do you know how much? Just a quick little splash? Or? You know, you can measure all you want. It's just sort of like cooking. You get used to the, the cocktails, and so you can throw in just with that eye or that, mm -hmm. that a little bit of And, amount. of course, tasting. Right, tasting it, yeah. And if it doesn't, <laughs> you, you, you add more of the booty call or the Cointreau for sure. Okay. Great. <laughs> so if What's you can next? add a little bit of Cointreau. Yes, I would be happy to. My favorite part about putting Cointreau in? Nice. I like that sound, nice. right? That's when you know it's going to be a good cocktail. Exactly. Okay, and then how much of this again? A splash or yeah, that's little, great. Little chug, 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 mm -hmm. chug, 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 chug. Perfect. There we go. Right. And then we're going to put a little cherry brandy in there mm. as well. So we got a lot of cocktail mix in here. And if you can throw in the bitters, mm -hmm. I have a feeling that's coming next. And this actually smells like cinnamon to me. It's yeah, got it's, really it's it's there's unique. so many different types of bitters these mm -hmm. days, and they're just lovely in any drink. Yeah, I haven't tried this one before, so just a couple little. Splashes like so. Yes, and then we're going to top it off with tonic. And then I see you got that fresh bowl of cherries there. Yes, oh. so we're going to garnish it with this. Okay. And speaking Fantastic. of garnishing, I've got some nice bright green leaves. How many did you see in here? You want about three to garnish yes. it? That'd be great. I think we're, oh, does that ever so smell nice? Yeah, the basil is lovely. Oop. A little. Little, little savory garnish there. in there. Yeah, very robust smelling. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to taste it. Ready? Here we go. Splash. Oh, that's got a nice Great. long branch on it. And then we'll put these on. And I love how you put the flowers on here and a fresh cherry. Yes. So pretty. The garnish. Right? 
be a little Very difficult uh -oh. to drink with a straw, but we'll do it. Yeah. Mine's not wanting to go. There we go. I think I got it. Just to the second course. That's right. Just don't poke your eye when no. you're doing it. <laughs> I guess we'll have to lift these a little bit. Yeah, that's right. You have to manage your garnishes accordingly. Practice safe garnishing. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And this is the cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. Yum. Mm. Oh, that's, that's good. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Potatoes. Yes. Potatoes. <laughs> yes, they are. I smell mashed potatoes. Right? Yes. So we're going to start. Smashed or smashed? Well, these ones are smashed ah. because they've still got the skins on. Perfect. So we call them in our industry mashed when they are peeled and smashed when they have the skin on. Skins. So did they charge you different? I, not normally. <laughs> oh, okay. But we'll see. Maybe you <laughs> could because smashed sounds fancier. Yeah, I was going to really? say you could charge more, more for the smash yeah. and you had to Smashing. do less work. You got more skin in there. You got more, more skin, skin in the, in the game. game. That's right. That's a, good thing. <laughs> a great You owe me a cocktail after. Right? Yeah.